G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so it's Saturday here in Australia, uh, early Saturday morning, so sort of 10.40, and we can see the market has just had a bit of a rebound, so uh, that's pretty good, but we're not completely out of the woods yet, but we'll get to that very shortly. But what we can see is the market's still under a trillion dollars though, so we really want to, you know, be a trillion uh, and well above. Uh, but, you know, 961 billion is not too bad. BTC dominance, it just continues to drop. So we really are sort of, you know, this is alt season. And, you know, I don't know if we will see Bitcoin get uh, back up to the 70s again. But look, you know, who knows? We can't be sure. But we are definitely sort of getting into the Bitcoin, dom uh, sorry, the altcoin uh, season at the moment. Uh, and it could just continue, you know. People may continue to put more money into altcoins as their upside potential is a lot more than bitcoin possibly like no one really knows i mean you know bitcoin's really stalled out of this kind of thirty thousand dollar range we got to the you know kind of peak of that forty two thousand we you know we pulled down to twenty nine thousand only sort of wick down there and now we're sort of just in that ranging motion again but we'll go to the chart shortly and have a look at that but ETH dominance is growing and again you can see the gas fees are quite high at the moment because everyone's jumping into the altcoins that's where some serious gains are being made but look you can make some serious losses in altcoins so you know just be careful but this may not be a bad spot to get back into Bitcoin because as we can see it's pulled back it's bounced here a little bit but again, we'll get to the charts very shortly. It may not be over. But let's have a look. Has anything really moved? What's been the biggest movers? Because we can see a bit of green here, but I'm going to say some things are probably really pumped. All right, basic attention token. Voyager, Decentraland. So basic attention token uh, and Decentraland. There is talk that uh, Grayscale are going to start uh, trusts for them. So they have pumped pumped pretty hard I would say based on some of that news uh, and again coins are just you know really starting to come back uh, the Aave link token are uh, doing quite well because uh, Chainlink itself has done well uh, and Aave also doing uh, not too bad at all and particularly with the news that they are teaming up uh, well, not teaming up so much, but they have now combined with the Matic network for layer two solutions uh, on their platform. Uh, that's quite good. Uh, and I am planning to go ahead and use the Aave platform now. Uh, prior, it was just too expensive, similar to Kyber Network. And Kyber Networks had some good news coming out. Uh, they're going to their 3.0 version. And again, that will uh, address the... Uh, gas fee uh, solutions at least uh, from the thread that I read so there's lots of good news coming out at the moment but I mean you can see look engine coin uh, is doing extremely well uh, on the back of that news from Japan uh, that it's an official uh, token gaming token to be uh, on their exchanges now Uniswap the graph uh, again I was concerned about the graph but it's done pretty well but look it has hit a peak and now sort of come down and maybe starting to make its way back up uh, synthetics network it's really just kind of ranging at the moment i'm still super bullish on synthetics network uh, i think the upside is still uh, plenty from here but look corrections will come so you just got to not panic and get shaken out and things like that uh, and look it is up substantially at the moment so i'm not saying it's the best buy now you would really need to do some research of your own but for my personal opinion, not financial advice, I never offer financial advice. I think the upside for Synthetics Network Token is uh, still pretty good in the short to mid term. Uh, and look, even in the long term, I think it's going to be around and it's going to be, uh, yeah, I think it'll be around for a while. And I think, um, you know, institutions are going to get involved with it and things like that. Same with Aave. I think uh, Synthetics, uh, Aave and Chain Chainlink all have uh, adoption uh, from the bigger players in the long term, but they will also probably dump pretty hard once the next bear market happens, and that's when I'd say a lot of the uh, institutions will probably be looking to get back in uh, because they may have already looked at it and think that they're sort of overpriced at the moment, but who knows? Again, it's not financial advice. No one really knows, but you know, my biggest sort of altcoin picks, I don't consider Ethereum an altcoin pick anymore, 
is Ave Chink, uh, Ave Chain Link uh, and Synthetics Network. They're, they're probably uh, my biggest uh, plays, and I am still extremely bullish on them. And I think they have more uh, upside potential. I probably need to. Uh, get some more Aave. It's just one of those human psychology things when a coin is at $200, you're always going, oh, I could probably buy something that's cheaper and it'll do better. No, not necessarily. Uh, so, I mean, I will buy some more Aave. It's just as simple as that. Uh, I'll just have to, you know, I'll do a little bit more research. Uh, well, it looks like it's been ranging for seven days. So again, I'll probably do some more research and just see if I think this is a good buy in price. Again, once I feel like we're getting towards the peak cycle, I'm going to sell probably 50% minimum of all my uh, altcoins and possibly even, I don't know if I'll sell 50% of my um, Bitcoin, uh, but I'll probably sell, I reckon, 20 to 30% of my Bitcoin. Uh, and Ethereum, likewise, I'll probably sell 50% of it uh, just because, you know, bear markets are so brutal. And I've ridden, you know, I've ridden one all the way to the top and I rode it all the way to the bottom and now I'm riding it back up again. Uh, you know, you do have to take profits. Uh, but again, you need to work that out for yourself. Things are doing really well. But what about losses over the last 24 hours? Any losses? Not really. Have a look at that. It's mostly, you know, very low kind of single digit sort of losses. Nothing too major at all. So, you know, could this uh, be a bit of a dead cat bounce that's happening uh, this weekend? Or have we really found the bottom and are we going to surge upwards? Well, let's go and have a look. And really, we just got to follow the Bitcoin chart. The Bitcoin uh, chart will really tell you what's going to happen with the rest of the coins. If it really starts to tank, um, altcoins can still go up a little bit, but eventually they will just start to follow suit. If you watch the Bitcoin chart, study the Bitcoin chart, it'll give you an indication of where the entire market is going, uh, not where the coins are going to go uh, individually, uh, you know, in the next 24 hours or something. But when Bitcoin ranges, altcoins pump. When Bitcoin goes up, Altcoins go up, but they just don't do as well. They get outpaced by Bitcoin. But when pit, when Bitcoin dumps, altcoins really, really dump. They can really get hurt. And as we saw in the last sort of 24 hours, some of the altcoins, you know, they had, you know, 20, 30% uh, losses almost overnight. So let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Here we are. All right. So as we can see, this is still, you know, possibly going to play out, but we'll just have to wait and see. There's no guarantees. But if I remove this, we can see Wix. Uh, this at the moment, this uh, daily chart, you know, is almost over. But we can see it wicked right up and then it's pulled back. And then it wicked right down uh, and, you know, pulled back up here. So it's really, it's undetermined at the moment, uh, this wick. It's a little bit of indecision because the wick down to the bottom is almost as uh, long as the wick up to the top. So we could almost say it's like a spinning top. These are spinning top sort of things here. And, and that's indecision in the market. They don't know what's happening. And then you can see it can roll over. And then other times it can pump. Again, indecision, not sure what it's doing, still a bit of indecision. And then we have this big pump. And again, indecision, uh, and then it pumps. But also you can have indecision uh, and it dumps. So we have to wait and see. This isn't exactly a spinning top candle but it is a candle of a bit of indecision because the wicks are so large on either side uh, you know it's all right if you have this fairly large wick down the bottom but then it gets uh, bought up that's not as much indecision but it is still shaky that the price can be pushed so far down so again we're just waiting to see this could uh, still play out like this and kind of roll over a little bit and then roll over a little bit and roll over a little bit I would be surprised if we came down below the kind of twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand dollar mark, but not. But it's not completely out of uh, you know consideration. As I spoke yesterday, I wouldn't be overly surprised. Like again, if we sort of came down to, I'm thinking more around this twenty-four, twenty-five mark here. But look, you know, if we came down and tested sort of twenty thousand down to the our one hundred day moving average. That's not the worst thing in the world that could ever happen. Unless you're bored all the way up here, it's going to hurt. But you just got to hold. All right, we're not going to spend too much on the t too much time on the charts, as I already did that yesterday. So let's move on to some uh, news stories. 
So number one, this is uh, fairly new, only just came out in the last hour. So Senate committee votes unanimously uh, in favour of Yellen as Treasury Secretary. So she's been voted in uh, and yeah, congratulations to her. Now I did put out a tweet just before uh, and oh, now I've got to go here. Uh, all right, and here. All right, so congratulations to Janet Yellen on being unanimously voted in. I hope she focuses more on crypto's abilities to transform the current financial system and not that it can on limited occasions, that on limited occasions it can be used for nefarious purposes. Look, cash gets used for nefarious purpose, purposes, I'd say a million times more than cryptocurrencies. And we're not getting ready to ban cash and over-regulate and all the rest of it. We definitely need regulations. And I hope she fo uh, uh, focuses sorry, on the positive sides of what cryptos can do and not too much of the uh, you know, regulatory stuff and you know, over-regulating it that she kind of alluded to the other day. And again, she came out pretty quickly and clarified herself. So I do hope... Uh, that she is going to focus more on yeah, the upsides and you know what it can do to transform the current financial systems as opposed to yeah you know some bad apples kind of spoiling it for people all right van eck over here so they've tried to launch a bitcoin uh, etf a number of times and they just haven't been able to get it over the line uh, for whatever reasons, it keeps getting knocked back. So they've gone for a different ETF. So after several unsuccessful attempts to receive approval for a Bitcoin ETF, the US investment manager Van Eck decided to try its hand with an exchange traded fund that follows crypto companies. So again, uh, ETF on um, Bitcoin itself just can't get it over the line so they've decided to you know sort of go down a slightly different route it'll still really be based around sort of bitcoin but not just bitcoin alone also other cryptocurrencies which is kind of a good thing as well so the firm has filed a document with the u.s Sec u.s securities and exchange commission to release a digital asset ec e etf sorry to track the price and performance of the global digit at digit Digital Asset Equity Index. God, I'm really struggling. I don't know why. Anyone would think I can't read. So uh, I actually think this could be better than uh, Bitcoin ETF by itself. Uh, it will take into consideration all of cryptocurrencies and how all of them are doing. Now, again, that's great in, in, you know, in a bull market, in a bear market, that can really start to hurt. But it really does legitimize it uh, and it'll take into uh, consideration how the entire digital uh, asset market is doing as opposed to just one currency. So I think this is uh, really, really bullish for cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, and I really hope it gets across the line. Uh, again, it's just going to help to legitimize this industry that we're in and show that we're not some fly-by-night thing and it's not all a scam. And there is, you know, tons of really, really good projects out there. And I mean that, tons. Well, tons probably not, a, a, you know, something that we want to use, not the kind of... Uh, identifier but there is quite a number of really really good projects out there that you know they're legit they got real teams behind them they got real world use cases and all the rest of it unfortunately you know i think you go over here coin gecko and i think there's something let's scroll down here oh god 62 pages so i don't know how many let's go to page 62 then let's have a look what number are we at or have we just completely lost numbers here yeah, I don't think they're even numbering them uh, anymore. So I think I read somewhere that there's 8,000 different cryptocurrencies. I think there's probably maybe 100 or 200 uh, that might be, you know, that could be legit and have some real world use cases. And the rest of them, they're all just a load of crap. So yeah, we, we need to be aware of that. There's a lot of scam rug pull ones and just dodgy stuff happening out there. But there's some really, really good projects like Ethereum. Again, not financial advice, personal opinion. I, I think it's here to stay. I, I don't see it going anywhere. I think Polkadot has real upside potential as well, and I don't think it'll uh, go anywhere. But it, it's still early days for Polkadot. It's taken a long time to get here. Again, Cardano, all the work that Charles Hoskinson has done on Cardano. And I think there's enough room for all of these projects, I don't think it has to be Ethereum or nothing or Polkadot or nothing or Cardano or nothing. Again, Litecoin, it's been around for a long time. Uh, is it a leader in innovation and all the rest of it? 
Well, sort of. It does mimble wimble and, you know, SegWit and all the rest of it. Generally gets tested on Litecoin uh, before it gets moved on to Bitcoin. Chainlink, I think it has real world, uh, you know, uh, use cases and I think it'll be around. And again, a number of other stellar, you know, looking to bring out uh, other stable coins uh, on their platform. So there is real world use case for cryptocurrencies. It's not, you know, be careful of anyone who's a maximalist and says it's Bitcoin only, everything is fake or Ethereum maximalist where it's Ethereum only and nothing else can, you know, do the smart contracts and all the rest of it. Rubbish, garbage. People are always going to come up with new stuff and some of it is going to be really, really good. And unfortunately, you know, some of it to probably a lot of it will just be absolute garbage. But don't just write things off because, you know, yeah, don't get that maximalist mindset that is only going to limit your ability, uh, you know, to make the most of this industry. It is new. It is emerging. You have to sift through the garbage, but there is going to be some absolute diamonds in there. You just got to, yeah, do some research, get your head around it uh, and, yeah, get out there and do your own research but also you know use the sentiment that you can find on twitter uh, you know youtube and things like that you know make sure you're following good reputable people who have been around for a while uh, and look i haven't been around for that long in the youtube space but i've been around for a while in cryptocurrencies i'm not saying believe me that's not what i'm saying but just get out there, you know, and you'll find the sentiment of, you know, what people are bullish on and believe in. And, you know, if it's just some random obscure video by one or two people that, and it's a project that no one else has covered, except for if they're like the first to cover it, it's probably just garbage and not that good. Again, use Discord, you know, use Telegram and all the rest of it. But please, please, please be aware there are so many scams on there, out there. Don't click on links. Don't get suckered into anyone telling you to send crypto to them and they'll send you more back or any of that garbage. All right. So the FUD the other day we had about, you know, the double spend and I reported on it, not because I believed it was true so much, just that it was an article out there. I wasn't sure whether it was true or not. Turns out it was just complete and utter crap, which is good. Uh, BitMEX, you know, again, you know, whether they uh, did it on purpose or not or legitimately thought it was a double spend, uh, it's turned out to be just a load of hogs wallop. But look, there's a company, a Canadian VR company, because of that, they sold $4.2 million worth of Bitcoin following that FUD. Now, they are in luck. They did make a 5% return uh, on interest uh, since they bought it. So it's not like they lost money, but they probably won't be able to buy that back at a cheaper price. And there was probably a whole lot more upside to that Bitcoin. But the one thing we need to remember here is no one ever lost money taking profits. So they haven't lost money, they made money. They just may have lost some unrealized future gains. But in the end, I don't think they should be too worried. They made a 5% like five percent profit. And I think it was $200,000 after the sale. So they haven't lost, they just maybe got a little bit duped. And they're things that we need to be aware of. The FUD that people will spread out there. And I please, you know, I hope anyone doesn't think I was spreading FUD. I hadn't lost faith in Bitcoin. I simply wanted to report what I had found out there. Uh, and again, I didn't panic sell any of my Bitcoin. I just simply held and was like, ah, I don't know, I'll wait for, you know, further information. And if that was the case, then we all just would have been completely and utterly wrecked. What can you do? It wasn't the case. It is just, yeah, people spreading FUD. Now, one of the projects I'm super bullish on, uh, REN, it's finally starting to make some moves. I got into it, uh, you know, the dollar value was always going up, but not by much. It was just getting way outpaced uh, by Bitcoin and everything else. Uh, I showed you the charts a while ago. It had been falling down against Bitcoin. I had two attempts thinking I'd found the bottom and didn't. And then on, I think, the third attempt, no, I think it was, sorry, I had one attempt uh, thinking I'd caught the bottom against Bitcoin. I was wrong. It fell even further. Again, the dollar value still went up, not by a whole lot. It was just kind of trickling up, but it was being well outpaced by BTC. And then the second time I thought, oh, geez, this has got to be close. And so I built another position uh, and I was right. Again, I didn't pick it exactly and I don't need to. I just need to be thereabouts. And we can see it's had a 100% rally. But uh, there was something else in here where it said, yeah. So over the past three weeks, the price of REN has increased by more than 200%, going from uh, 25 cents to 77 cents. So 
I mean, again, that's on the dollar against Bitcoin. It hasn't uh, done that because, well, actually it might have. I'd have to check Bitcoin. But either way, it's starting to finally perform. And was there something I put in here? No. But basically, Ren, what it is, is you can go and take a coin, use Ren, and then put it on another blockchain. That's really what uh, Ren's use case is. But look, you can run dark nodes and things like that. You need over 100,000 Ren, which... Uh, means you need over a hundred thousand dollars at the moment because it's nearly a US dollar to buy a REN. Uh, but I, I, I like REN, particularly I feel there's going to be a lot of stuff uh, going between Ethereum uh, and Polkadot using uh, the REN VM system. But uh, congratulations to anyone who is in REN, uh, you know, who uh, people like me who held and were like, I still believe in the project, I think it's got legs. And again, you weren't losing money in dollar value, so you. You didn't need to panic and get out. We were just being well outpaced by other pro, uh, other projects and finally Ren starting to make a move. So congratulations to all those and anyone who's in Ren. Now, Bitcoin as a last resort. Murmurs of crypto as a reserve currency abound. So what happens when the world and the US dollar is in a continual state of quantitative easing? Can Bitcoin find a new and unexpected role for itself? That's what I spoke about the other day. You know, there's going to be a basket of things, I think. I don't think it's just going to be the US dollar anymore. The US dollar will still be in there and possibly the euro dollar and, you know, some other things. But I think Bitcoin has a place in there as well. But it's probably not going to happen sort of overnight. We'll just have to wait and see. And there were some interesting things that were written in here. So we'll start here. The reserve currency is money held by central banks or treasuries, usually for international transactions. Argentina, for instance, is not going to be able to purchase a Boeing 737 MAX passenger jet, for example, with its highly inflationary peso. It will have to pay with US dollars, which is why Argentina keeps dollars on hand. A second basic function is to support the value of a national currency. If the Brazilian real, for instance, plummets during an economic uh, contraction, Brazil's central bank could bid it up again by purchasing reals with dollars that it holds in its reserve. Now, could Bitcoin fulfill these key functions as a reserve currency? I certainly think so in the future, at least, uh, says Frank Knoll, a monetary historian and president of Knoll Historical Consulting. Bitcoin's electronic nature makes it well situated for settling payments. If gold was used in the past to do so, this digital gold should do the job as well, if not better. So again, I think Bitcoin should be included. Now, that's just my personal opinion. It doesn't mean uh, you know the IMF or anyone's going to take it into consideration. But I think Bitcoin's finally you know proved itself, its legitimacy. Again, there's still FUD out there and people are going to say with double spends and all the rest of it. If that hasn't happened by this time, I just find it hard to believe that it's all of a sudden going to happen. But, you know, we never know. But what we do know is the fiat dollar based system is failing regardless and they've all failed they just continually basically go to zero they don't last for much more than a hundred years now this is a chart that shows that so portugal uh its money was you know kind of the, the world reserve currency from 1450 to 1530 it lasted 80 years spain's uh i don't know what their money is but that lasted for 110 years netherlands 80 years France's 95 years, United Kingdom's 95 years, and USA, well, we all know it's getting printed into oblivion. None of them last. They just, they, they don't go to zero. You know, people say they go to zero. They don't go to zero, but they just, something else comes along and takes it over because it gets, yeah, it just becomes outdated. Now, cryptocurrencies could be used as part of a basket in the future. It would unlikely be a single cryptocurrency in the basket. By the time this happens, all major central banks will have their version of a cryptocurrency. So they're more sort of digital stable coins. I think they will be in there. I think Ethereum should probably be put in there. I think Bitcoin should be put in there. Uh, and again, you know, there's talk about, you know, again, there's the whole XRP FUD at the moment that, you know, the IMF, uh, you know, make uh, Ripple, sorry, XRP uh, a world currency. Maybe that could be in there. If that happens, again, if they get hammered by the SEC and their security, then that probably won't happen. But all I'm saying is I think that's what we need. We shouldn't have one, you know, kind of thing that 
is completely relied on like the US dollar because it just doesn't work. We need to have a central, you know, a, a, a basket of, you know, those currencies that hold everything up. And I definitely think Bitcoin has a, pra- a place in that. Whether that happens or not, who knows? All right. So Russia's largest retail bank uh, wants to launch its own stable coin. So we go down here. So uh, Russia's largest retail bank is working to release its own stable coin, according to reports. Moscow-based uh, Suburbank, hopefully I said that right, I probably butchered it, this month sent an application to Russia's, Russia's central bank to issue a digital token for its customers. The digital token will be pegged to the Russian ruble and will run on the blockchain. Doesn't say what blockchain though. The news report said the stablecoin could be launched as early as this spring. Now I think there was uh, the Ukraine maybe it was, was launching their stablecoin on the Stellar network. Uh, So yeah, uh, uh, whether Russia is going to do the same or not, who knows. But interesting, this is the way it's going and you know, they talk about the digital dollar you know, USDC, highly regulated and all the rest of it, I wouldn't be surprised if that's how America just uh, goes with its digital dollar. Why, you know, go through the hassle of, you know, having to develop and all when USDC is right there. I don't think Tether uh, will be used uh, because it's got too many issues, but the USDC uh, circle and Coinbase uh, coin, uh, it's already done, it's already right there. So why wouldn't, you know, the US government just adopt it. It's not to say they will, but it just make things a whole lot easier. It's been out there for a while. It's kind of battle tested already. Uh, I think that would be the smarter way to go, but you know, that's just my opinion. All right, last but not least. So there's been this dip and people, you know, get a little bit worried. And again, as I've said, Bitcoin still could go down, but this is one of the reasons why it might not. So the dip happened, and what did MicroStrategy do? They bought $10 million uh, more in Bitcoin. Got down to 31800 or, th- or something, uh, and they bought some more. So that is another reason why even if you know Bitcoin does go down to, let's say, 27000 I just I think it's going to be hard for it to go much lower than that. Not impossible. I just think it's going to be hard. MicroStrategy is part of their... Um, the... the uh, way they've decided to use their capital is if Bitcoin dips, they're buying more. And they'll just continue to do so if it dips to the prices that they're kind of happy with that. There's going to be a point where they probably stop buying. It's just not worth it. But at the moment, they thought 30000 was a good price. So with their reserve strategy, um, they basically said, right, if it gets down to this price, we'll buy some. Uh, and where is it? Uh, an average price of 31800 I can't find it now. Here we go. So in line with their uh, Treasury Reserve policy, they bought Bitcoin at an average price of approximately $31,800. Bitcoin's currently $32,600. So it's only a couple of hundred dollars off that. So oh, look, here we go. The new day started and we got a red candle. So that doesn't mean it's going to continue to be red. We still could start to pump up. Who knows? Uh, but if micro strategy are still buying, if grayscale are still buying and all the rest of it, you know, my personal opinion, again, not financial advice, this is probably still a good time to buy. It's not a bad price. Could it go lower? Yep. Could go down to 28000 Could go down to 20000 Could go down to 16000 That wouldn't mean uh, it's... Don't get me wrong, it is bearish going on the way down. But as I've stated before, regularly through it, not regularly, but at least a couple of times throughout a bull market, Bitcoin will come and bounce off the 200-day moving average. So if it came and bounced off here, that wouldn't mean it's all over. We would still be in a, an up market, bull, in a bull market uptrend. It's just what they would consider a healthy correction. All right, love to know your thoughts down below. Do you still think Bitcoin is a good price at the moment? So let's say roughly 32,000, or are you waiting for better buy-ins? Do you think we're going to 27, 28,000? Do you think we're going down to 20 sort of thousand? Do you think it's possible we make it down to around about 16,000? Love to know your thoughts and whether you're buying. Stay safe, be kind to one another. There's plenty of gains out there in the altcoin market at the moment. They still seem to be doing all right, but just beware, we might go lower. All right, I'll see you next time.